Hi fools and welcome to another Foolish Investing video. I'm Andy Paul here with analyst Nate Weishar. Uh, today, Nate and I, we're going to take a look at the dangers of chasing high yield returns. So, familiar scenario, we know that if you have your cash in the bank account right now, you're probably earning something like 0.5% unless you've got a special deal. And at any rate, you may actually be struggling to find uh, a rate of return out there that's actually going to keep you up with the current rate of inflation at 2.7%. So, most, many people are looking at the stock market right now as an alternative way of um, finding income uh, uh, from, from their cash. Um, and obviously it carries more risk being the market. Um, so Nate, first of all, what kind of rate of return can we expect from the market as a whole right now? Uh, well, in terms of income, the FTSE 100 is yielding about 3.5%. Okay. So if you had a, a FTSE tracker, you could expect income of around 3.5%, which would uh, outpace inflation slightly. So that's, that's okay, but you know it's still 3.5%. And I think you know, prior to the credit crunch, we were all used to having you know, 5 or 6% rates of return from these Icelandic banks, which <laughs> clearly wasn't sustainable. But, you know, going through some of the stocks in the market out there, you can find yields um, of, you know, five, six, seven percent. So is it just a case of uh, searching through and finding the shares with the biggest yields and going for those, or is that a bad idea? Uh, well, it's not necessarily a bad idea, but you can't just go off of the, the reported yield numbers, um, as was demonstrated recently by RSA, which, uh, had a yield of 7%, mm -hmm. which is, is pretty attractive, um, until they cut their dividend by a third. Uh, right. <laughs> then not only was the yield cut, but the shares dropped 14% in a day. So anyone who was holding those shares lost a piece of their capital as well. Yeah. Um, shares at current prices have a yield of about five, which is still impressive, mm -hmm. but um, uh, shareholders are obviously shaken by this. Yes, yeah. So, I mean, you know, one of RSA's biggest competitors is Aviva. I mean, um, you know, it's yielding a similar amount uh, to RSA, and I guess, you know, shareholders of Aviva may be wondering if the same thing's about to happen to them. Um, so what can we do as investors in terms of mitigating some of the risk when we, we look at a company and we're evaluating it for its, um, its yield in terms of making sure it can continue to pay out the dividend payment that we're after? Well, the biggest issue is cash flows because dividends are paid out of cash flows and if the company is paying too large a dividend meaning that its cash flows can't support that dividend then you're going to run into trouble mm -hmm. um, in the case of rsa it wasn't that their dividend was necessarily too high at this point but uh, the ceo sees issues with the cash flows possibly shrinking in the coming years and uh, felt that now it would be prudent to get ahead of that um, so when you're looking at an income pair, you want to make sure that the, their cash flows are strong enough to support the dividend or that they've got a balance sheet that's strong enough that if the cash flow should slow for some reason, uh, they can use a little bit of debt to support their dividend. All right. Because most companies kind of shy away from trying to cut a dividend at all costs because yeah. of the fact that it puts the... Um, the, 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 the um, Scares the investors, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. Um, okay, well, thanks for the analysis on the, the high-yielding stocks. Now, if you'd like to know more about high-yielding companies, head over to our website at full.co.uk.